All right, we want to welcome you again to our online midweek service. Uh, we're, uh, I, I won't say we're getting it down, but we're, we are getting zeroed in on it a little bit. So we're so glad to have you join us. Of course, just a reminder, we're doing this 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. At least it'll be posted or up, uh, uploaded for you to get at 11 o'clock Sunday mornings and then 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. Let me begin by uh, making just a few announcements again. Uh, I've mentioned several times, I'll remind you again, if you have prayer requests, you can email those. Church email address is hazelwoodbaptist at hotmail.com. Or please feel free to call uh, my phone, Shelley's phone, uh, any of our contact numbers if you have any needs at all or any requests at all. Thanks again to those who have been faithfully sending their tithe in. I've said a couple of times, we're like everybody else, it's, uh, it, it's tight right now, and we understand that's the case for everyone, but you've all been very faithful, and we thank you so much. If you want to send those in, you can mail them to Hazelwood Baptist Church, 9838 South County Road 0, Clayton, Indiana, 46118. Or a number of folks have just been dropping them by. If you need us to come by and pick them up, we, we would be happy to do that. We uh, continue to do our social distance visitation. In fact, my wife and I went out today uh, on my motorcycle. Well, I should say, for those of you that know the inside joke, on Mike Maynard's motorcycle. Uh, but uh, we had a good ride and we had a, a, some nice visits today. We've visited uh, all three days this week, uh, had a big day on Monday, and this beautiful weather today has been wonderful. So uh, we're going to try to continue to get around and see uh, most of you if we're able to do it. Uh, we'll give you a call ahead of time, let you know we're coming. If that doesn't work for you or you're not feeling well, uh, then just let us know. You won't hurt our feelings a bit. Uh, we're trying to do it on nice days, so we pull up in the car generally and you, uh, you can come out on the porch and we get a chance to visit a little bit and then have prayer. Um, let me go over our prayer list with you uh, as we do on Wednesday nights. We thank you for your prayers for Ron Molin. He's doing so much better and, and he's expressed many times to me his appreciation for you and for your prayers. Please, we've mentioned Pat and Teresa. Uh, they're both doing better. So again, we praise the Lord for that. Please continue in your prayers for missionary Mark Pitts. Uh, we, if you're on our email list for the missionaries, you've already read his most recent uh, uh, letter, and you know that uh, he's uh, immune system weakened. He's kind of hunkered down like many are because of the cancer treatments, but he's doing well. Please continue to pray for evangelist Tom Farrell and his recovery. Please continue in your prayers for Russ Kirkham. They postponed his treatments until May. Continue to pray for Darren and Lucille, for Jacob, for Gilbert uh, Bias. Continue to pray for Ethan and for uh, Jerry Doherty. I think I told you Sunday, I got word from Jerry, talked to him last week, that the doctor's very pleased with his uh, progress. And so he still continues to take his treatment, but uh, progress is very good. Doctor is pleased with it. Uh, continue to pray for Carol's request for her brother Steve, who was diagnosed with coronavirus. Uh, pray for Russ Mills. Uh, pray for Retha Thompson. Uh, this is uh, uh, someone uh, connected with Verla and uh, her sister-in-law. Uh, she had uh, major cancer surgery last week, brain cancer, and is, uh, it's pretty rough. So please pray for her as you think about it. I mentioned also Sunday that Corey Riggins has been diagnosed with cancer and is uh, undergoing uh, uh, surgery on the 27th of this month, and they'll follow that up with chemotherapy. Pre please pray for uh, Corey. <clears throat> pray for our country. Pray for our military men. Pray for our church ministries uh, as soon as we're able to get back full force and conduct all of them. But uh, we're thankful for what the Lord is is uh, doing in each of our lives, even, even in the midst of uh, difficult times. We trust God. Uh, pray for our uh, 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 folks who are, number of folks that are on our list who are away from the Lord. We're praying for those folks to uh, get right with God, uh, either 
either genuinely get saved or that the Lord would do what's necessary to wake them up and get their attention and turn them back to him. The DeFord family over the loss of Brother Dave, please pray for them. Ray Bowie's family uh, uh, who passed away a few weeks ago, pray for them. Uh, a number of those on the list for salvation, Eric and Tim, Steve Bavitz's uh, parents, uh, Delmer Shoemaker, Travis, Skip, uh, Carrie's mom, Katina's parents, Justin Beal, Kathleen Denny, Joan Carmen's brother, the Clifton family, Rick and uh, El, Ajitha, and Mike Ellis. And I was going to wait till we were back together to tell you this, but I will tell you, uh, many of you won't know won't know who he is, but you know he's been on our prayer list for a long, long time. Scott Colgrove, who runs the, the uh, inn or the, the place where we go, many of us have gone fishing every year, and uh, his dad ran it before him, so some of us who've been up in Canada fishing know uh, Scott and his wife and family, and uh, we've been praying for him for some time, and he's, he, he, he now recently gives a very clear testimony of salvation. So it's a wonderful answer to prayer, and all the Canada guys are excited and thrilled about that. So I wanted to pass that great answer to prayer along to you. Please continue to pray for the needs of our nation during this time. Please continue to pray for those who are at high risk with all of this going on. And we, as I have said, continue to trust God. He didn't leave the throne. He's still in charge. He's still in control. None of this caught him by surprise. I often say when things happen in our lives, the Lord didn't sit on the throne and say, oh, oh, oh I didn't see that coming. What am I going to do now? No, he's, he's still the king. He's still in charge. He's still, he's still sovereign. He still sits on the throne, and we still trust him. Well, all of our people here uh, at uh, the church know Pastor Carl Herbster. Came to work with us a couple of years ago, and it's been a great blessing to me and to our church. Um, we've been talking about some of the ministries that uh, operate, the, the church operates with and uh, connected with, and many of the folks uh, who um, involved in these ministries who are out of our church here and we we're so thankful and feel so blessed for what God has allowed uh, to be to be accomplished and so uh, one of those is Pastor Carl Herbster now he's uh, I, I tell folks he's the energizer bunny he, he goes non-stop he goes all the time but he started a ministry a number of years ago that's called Advance USA I'm not going to steal his thunder I'm going to let him tell you all about that uh, so Pastor Carl's going to come, and he's going to lead us in prayer for our prayer requests and needs, and then he's going to share a little bit about the ministry of Advance USA, and, um, and then he's going to have a message for us from the Word of God. So Pastor Carl, you come. Thank you, Pastor. I greatly appreciate this opportunity, and let me add a couple things to the prayer sheet before we pray because uh, I want us to be praying for Pastor Rich and for all the pastors that have to deal with this situation as we see uh, America opening up again, because there's going to be some challenges with that. Now, I have to say to you, it's been kind of a, a blessing for me over the last several weeks, because most of you know I'm usually preaching somewhere every week, and right now I've been following the stay-at-home uh, recommendations or orders depending where you are in the country and have been able to watch four different pastors preach every Sunday and Debbie and I have really enjoyed hearing pastors all around the world because uh, many of you know that our son Matt and his family are going to Hong Kong so we've been listening to the, the services there Matt's been doing the uh, Sunday school for the church in Hong Kong and then the pastor Johnson there and so we've been listening to, to those messages. And of course, many of you know that I'm involved with uh, Hidden Treasure Christian School in uh, Taylor, South Carolina, as I'm uh, there trying to help them through a, a time as they're looking for a new administrator. And so I, I listen to Pastor Monroe down there and I haven't a chance to, to hear what he has to say. 
and then there, my, my son and his family uh, go to a church in Easley, South Carolina, and I've known the pastor, Pastor Fuller, for quite a while, great uh, pastor and preacher, and so been able to listen to him. So I, preachers need to be preached to. I don't know if you knew that, but it's great to be able to be fed through all these different brethren that I count as personal friends as well, and I hope you'll pray for them. Pastors uh, all over the country and, yes, all over the world who are having to deal with this COVID-19 situation and trying to know how to minister to the people uh, properly and faithfully during this time of uh, closure, but also trying to figure out how do we open up again and do it in a way that is a good testimony and one that's safe uh, for the people we minister to. And so please be praying for those pastors. And I just heard today that the school system in South Carolina is going to be closed for the rest of the year. I can almost hear a yay all the way up here in Indiana from some of the brethren down there in South Carolina. But with that, again, uh, part-time responsibilities with Hidden Treasure Christian School, that means we have to make some adjustments, we have to make some plans, we have to figure out about re-enrollment and try to work out some things. So I hope you'll pray for uh, the ministry there one of the, the rare uh, special needs ministries, a school that's totally ministers to special need young people. Please pray for those families, those young people, and for us as we try to make plans to finish this year as best we can uh, with the students at a distance and then how to uh, go about having school next uh, fall. So pray about that. I'll actually be traveling down to South Carolina in my car by myself, just with my wife, alongside me we will keep good social distancing all the way but it's essential it's essential travel isn't that they said it? so essential that we get back down there and help out a little bit and uh, get with the, the folks and and be able to put some things together after this announcement today so those are a couple more prayer requests uh, let's pray together Father, we are so very thankful that we have the the privilege of coming into your throne room because of your son Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross of Calvary that you've opened up the Holy of Holies and we can communicate with you one-on-one -on -one as believers. Thank you for that day of salvation in each of our lives. Thank you even for this testimony of salvation there in Canada and how we rejoice with uh, this man who has been uh, involved with our men that go up there fishing. And I pray that you will help him to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you uh, for the privilege we have at this time to get out the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray, not just for those on our uh, list that need to be saved, but also for those that we come in contact with, even at a distance, whether it's by social media or it's through some of the opportunities that uh, we have in our emails and our texting. Lord, might we be continually a witness might we have the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We are uh, thankful, Lord, that you're the great physician, and I uh, was encouraged to hear some of these good reports of folks that are recovering from the uh, COVID virus and other sicknesses, and even for Mark Pitts being able to, to handle the uh, cancer treatments at this time, and Russ, and, and the way he's gone through the treatment, Jerry, as he's improving, and we do pray uh, Father, that you would uh, be near Tom Farrell and his uh, family, and as he goes through the cancer treatments, encourage him. Be with Ben, as this young man has the responsibilities of a church, and then ministering to his dad and his family as well. Help him, Lord, and encourage him. And I pray for Shelly Hamilton as well, as Ron is uh, uh, not doing well, and as she ministers to him and has other responsibilities. Please, Lord, uh, be near to our, our good friend, Ron Hamilton, and, and encourage him and, and help him in this stage of life to just rest and trust in thee. We do pray for those in authority over us. We know, Lord, that uh, the governors and the presidents have um, many decisions to make. We can't comprehend what they're dealing with, but we sure can pray for them, and we do so tonight and continually that you'll give them wisdom and strength and guidance from on high. And I do pray for our pastors, for Pastor Rich and for other pastors that I know around the country and around the world that are impacted uh, by the coronavirus and uh, trying to figure out how to minister effectively to the, the flock and, and how to be able to uh, once again come together 
as a body of believers in a, a safe way, in a way that would be a good testimony in our community. Please, Lord, give wisdom and direction in that. And I pray, Lord, that uh, not just our school there at Hidden Treasure Christian School, but all these young people are being impacted by the shutdown of the, the school system. I pray that you'll uh, do a work in each family's lives by growing families closer together during this time and giving them a greater love for each other and a greater love for you. And Father, we do pray that you will uh, help us to always uh, be the type of uh, Christians that will have a good testimony uh, and we will be able to have a faithful witness. Help us, Lord, because without you, we can do nothing. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I feel like you folks here at Hazelwood know a lot about Advance USA, so I'm not going to spend as much time as I normally do when I go into a new church and kind of share with them what we do in trying to impact our nation for righteousness. Our theme verse is Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness, righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so uh, we, and through Advance USA, uh, seek to uh, try to be an impact for righteousness uh, with our, our national elected officials. I had the privilege of getting to know uh, John Ashcroft as a pastor in Kansas City, Missouri, and as he encouraged me to get involved in government, uh, I took that opportunity, later became the president of the American Association of Christian Schools, and was involved on a national level, helped establish an office in Washington, D.C., and, and really developed a burden uh, for those who serve in Congress, those that serve in the executive branch there in Washington, D.C., and really a, a burden for people that s serve in our local state houses as well, even though Advance USA is for the USA and not for the local state ministries. I have uh, taught uh, many times that we have a responsibility to government. I'm, I wish uh, you were all here, Hazelwood folks, because I could quiz you and see if you remember that we have a responsibility to pray for those that have authority over us. That's 1 Timothy chapter 2. We have a responsibility to obey those that have the authority over us. That's Romans chapter 13. We have a responsibility to pay to those that have the authority over us. That's the taxes that uh, we're told by the Lord Jesus Christ himself to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. But Romans 13 says, tribute to whom tribute is due. So we pay. And that's just to keep everything rhyming. I, I don't know if you remember the last one or not, but it's, we have the responsibility to sway our government. That's Matthew chapter 5, where we're supposed to be salt and light in the nation in which we live. Now, I'm so thankful to be in the United States of America. I grew up right here in the state of Indiana, northern Indiana, but uh, Indiana, as many of you did as well, and I didn't come to know the Lord Jesus Christ till I was 18 years of age. I hadn't heard the gospel, but uh, I had an older brother that trusted the Lord, and he challenged me to read the Bible because he said the Bible says you can know you're going to salvation, you can know you're going to heaven, and know that you have salvation. And so, reading through the book of uh, Romans, I came to Romans chapter three, and by the time I got to verse 28, where it says, "Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law." I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and I was saved. Nobody personally uh, discipled me, but I started studying the Bible. And that uh, summer of 1969, I got saved. But another important thing that happened to me, I met my wife of almost 50 years now. We'll be celebrating 50 years of marriage on November 7th this year. But in 1969, I had the privilege of meeting Debbie, and uh, we've enjoyed serving the Lord together all these years. Now, I didn't go into the ministry right out of college. I actually studied to be a basketball coach and maybe a math teacher if I had to teach something while I coached. But uh, I saw there was no money in that, and the Lord seemed fit to, saw fit to give us uh, three children quickly. And so we had Matthew, Mark, and Michael uh, in a, a two-year span, and I needed to make some money. So I went to an employment agency and had them test me, and the next thing I know, I'm working for Procter & Gamble Corporation as a uh, marketing uh, expert, and uh, then uh, later moved to work with Martin Marietta Corporation in Chicago, Illinois, as a sales manager for uh, that corporation. 
and through a little Baptist church uh, there in Dundee, Illinois, Fox Valley Baptist Church, the Lord really spoke to me about giving my life to ministry. And before uh, I knew it, I was surrendered to the, the preaching ministry, went back to seminary, later got my doctorate in Christian education, and headed to Kansas City to uh, pastor Tri-City Baptist Church, where I spent 28 years. Now, I could fill in a lot of other blanks, but that would cause us to be here a, a lot longer. And those of you that know me well know I left out a lot. But I thank the Lord that I'm back home again in Indiana. And that's a story in itself, how the Lord provided for us a place to, to be while my mother-in-law was uh, getting uh, elderly and needed to be in an assisted living facility and my wife needed to be close and I can travel out anywhere. And right now, I, I'm only... 15 to 20 minutes from the Indianapolis airport where I can pop on a plane and go wherever I need to go to do the ministry that God has called me to do. And I guess that's why you say I'm, I'm here, there, and everywhere, and this is a great airport to, to travel out of. I told people as I left the pastoral ministry, I said there's three things that I need wherever I am. I need a good church. Uh, I need a good representative somebody that uh, I can have a relationship with because what I do is teach others how to re have a relationship with their uh, representative, their congressman, their uh, congresswoman, their, their senator. And then I said I need a good airport. And I'm blessed here in Indiana that we have all three. And by the way, in South Carolina, where I minister as well at Hidden Treasure, we're blessed to have all three. Direct flights from Greenville to Washington, D.C., and direct flights from Indianapolis to Washington, D.C., even though I haven't been there for a while uh, because of the COVID-19 outbreak, I still have been in touch with what's going on there, and that's kind of what I wanted to share some with you tonight because there are three issues that are being discussed right now in the news that there's uh, some controversy about. As a matter of fact, I was on a call with hundreds of pastors uh, yesterday talking about some of these things and having some different people address us. And I've had personal calls, I have personal emails about three different things that uh, we have to think about in times like this. And when I mention them, I think you will be able to relate. First of all, what do we do with the CARES Act? Oh, isn't it wonderful that our government cares and I'm thankful that our government cares, but I'm not so thankful sometimes when they throw money at a problem, because money is the, the root of all evil. No, I guess that's not quite right, is it? Right? No, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. And sad to say, sometimes we compromise our faith because of the love of money. So there's a little controversy out there. Should you or should you not participate in the PPP, Paycheck Protection Plan? Should you uh, take the funds that will make you as a church or you as a Christian school or you as a mission agency or you as a Christian college able to continue to have your employees and be paid by the federal government? Now, I always try to remind people, yes, we pay the money to the government, but whose money is it really? It's we the people's money. It's not the federal government's money. It's our money that uh, we contribute because of the, the services that they give. But that's a controversy right now. Should we participate? Should we not participate? Number two, should churches be meeting during this crisis? I'm sure that you've seen how some places around the country, churches are still meeting. Now, we're not doing that here at Hazelwood. And I can tell you we're not doing that at Faith Baptist in Taylor, South Carolina, either. One a fairly large church, one a smaller church, one an urban church, one a rural church. But both churches have uh, chosen to follow the guidelines that have been put forth by our president and by our governors. We'll talk about that a little bit in according to what the Bible says. And then this is happening more and more and more. Protest. Come on, you can't tell me what to do. Come on, let's get back to work. And by the way. I want everybody to get back to work. I want everybody to get back to church. I want everybody to get back to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that through this crisis that maybe it's causing people to understand that only God can take care of us. Only God can meet our needs. 
And it's only God that's going to put, us behind, put this behind us. And I hope you're taking the time that God is giving you through this crisis to really be able to focus on God's word and on time with the family and time in prayer. Well, turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 13. You probably knew where I was going to have you turn to, to look at this, uh, these three issues from a biblical point of view. And again, may I say, I hope that you'll be praying for those that have to make decisions about these three things, but about a lot more than just these three things. I was glad to hear today uh, from uh, Senator McConnell that they're going to continue to be confirming judges in the Senate uh, during this time of crisis. That we're not all of a sudden going to stop one of the most important works, in my estimation, that's taking place in our government and that's uh, confirming good conservative judges to the bench that will not uh, take uh, situations and try to uh, uh, legislate uh, somehow from the bench, but that we would interpret the Constitution and make sure our freedoms aren't taken away. That's one of the concerns that's happening right now, this people's freedoms being taken away because of a virus. And how much are we going to let them do? And how much do we say that's unconstitutional? Lawsuits are out there. But I'm I'm so thankful there's a lot of other things that uh, these leaders have to think about. But as I work in Washington, D.C. with Advance USA, seeking to help people build a relationship with their member of Congress so they can minister to them spiritually and legislatively. One of the things I remind people is uh, these members of Congress have a soul. They have a family. They have needs. And so to help people build a relationship with their member of Congress so they can minister to them, so they can be ambassadors for Jesus Christ and sharing the gospel, but also ambassadors for righteousness so God can bless our nation. That's what we need to do in Advance USA. And this passage of Scripture in Romans chapter 13 gives us some principles for us to look at that we can then make application. And uh, I'm going to give you an outline, but not until I read the passage of Scripture. So Make sure and follow along with me as I read. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he, that beareth, not the, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, we must needs be subject, not only for wrath, not just because of the the problems they can bring upon our lives, and the judgment that might come, but also for conscience sake, because it's the right thing to do. Now, this passage of Scripture talks about us being submissive to those authorities that uh, God has placed over us. It tells us to obey. If you go back to one of those uh, uh, four things that I said in the beginning that the Bible instructs us and in how we relate to our government. We need to pray, we need to obey, we need to pay, and we need to sway. This one is talking about obey and the importance of obeying or submitting to those that have the authority over us. First of all, there is the exhortation given where he says, here's what he's exhorting us to do. He says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. And if you go to the end, he says, Wherefore, verse 5, ye must needs be subject to the higher powers. He brackets this passage of Scripture with this exhortation to submit to those that have the authority over us to be subject unto them. Then he gives an explanation for the exhortation. And what is the explanation? He says, well, the reason I established government was that they would bring good upon those that do good and evil upon those that do evil. They're the institution that has been designed by God to bring law and order. It is the institution that has the right to take somebody's life when that person has taken somebody else's life. 
God has given government the opportunity to reward people and to praise them and also to punish them. And this passage of Scripture says very clearly, if you do what they ask you to do, then you don't have anything to fear. It's kind of like if you're driving the speed limit, you have nothing to fear when you see the policeman coming up beside you. It, it, you, you realize that uh, I'm obeying the law. I'm submitting to the authority that God has placed over me. Now, I'm going to apply those two thoughts to the three issues that we talked about, and then I'm going to finish up with an exception. Because some of you already know there is an exception given in Scripture because there is a higher authority than government. Now, I hope you're all saying amen out there. And I, I think you know who that higher authority is. And I, I have a responsibility to obey the higher authority. But I, make, I need to make sure that uh, I'm really obeying a command of Scripture and not just some preference of mine because I don't want to obey the law of the land. So let's take these, this passage of Scripture and let's look at these three issues and let's evaluate them together. Now, what about the CARES Act? I'm told that tomorrow the uh, House of Representatives will pass uh, the additional almost uh, $500 billion, half a trillion dollars for the CARES Act which will include $310 billion, billion with a B, uh, for small businesses in the uh, Paycheck Protection Plan, which has uh, been passed by Congress and, uh, and something that has been promoted by the President of the United States. So let me ask you a question. Who takes care of our needs? Who is the one we should be looking to for our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. You know what prayer that comes from? The Lord's prayer. As a matter of fact, in Philippians 4 and verse 19, the Bible says, my government shall supply all of my need. Oh, I, I, I knew I was saying it wrong. You don't have to yell at your screen or whatever. Yeah, it, no, it doesn't say that, does it? It says, my God shall supply all my need. And we need to be looking to God to supply our needs, not looking to government to supply our needs. Now, let's be, let's be clear here. Uh, we do uh, have the opportunity to participate in the programs of our country that d does provide us some, some benefits, some financial benefit, because of the, the fact that we're taxpaying Americans and we qualify for what anybody else qualifies for. And we understand that. And I have helped people get food stamps because they needed food stamps, as well as a church, us helping them with some of those needs. That's a program that's available and a good program, if not abused. And those are the kind of things that we can do. Here's a program that could be used, but need not be abused. But here's what I want you to think about. Number one what message does it send to the world when we can't trust God to meet our needs? What message does that send? And number two, with money, many times comes regulations. Now, I have to uh, tell you that I'm glad that this administration is trying to protect uh, religious ministries probably better than any administration I've seen in my lifetime. It's one of our key issues in Advance USA is religious freedom, and I'm so thankful for the religious freedom. And even for the uh, Small Business Administration, they eliminated all regulations that this couldn't be participated in uh, by not-for-profits. And I sure wouldn't tell a not-for-profit what to do. I've had the opportunity to discuss this with several people. I said, this is a sole liberty issue. This is not something that I can say uh, definitely that you should do or you shouldn't do. This is between you and God. Uh, but I heard that a lot of you are still giving to this local church. And, you know, we should be giving to this local church, uh, whether there's a coronavirus or not. And we should be given extra and sacrificially. Uh, no, I'm not sending my 
extra payment from the government back when it comes to me. Uh, I'm not going to say, okay, when they're, they're going to pay me. Remember $1,200? Some of you have already received it. I have not yet, but I, I think it's coming. They tell me it's coming. And my wife's getting $1,200. But maybe we could even give a little bit more. Now, some of us haven't lost all of our income. Some people have. But maybe this is an opportunity for you to do something more because of this benefit. But I'm warning ministries that even though right now it may seem that there's no strings attached, there's no regulations, beware of government because um, there's an election coming. And sometimes um, things change. And if you've never taken any government assistance, you're definitely going to be a lot safer than if you do. So be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. And everybody has to decide for themselves. I'm not going to break fellowship with anybody that participates. I know churches, Christian schools, colleges that have, and uh, I've known those that haven't. And I think it's a, an issue for everybody to determine what they're going to do. But remember that we have to be careful about trusting government. What we really need to do is trust God. And uh, I always like to err on caution. I like, always like to err on safety. So I guess I, can, I guess I can tell you this, that Hidden Treasure Christian School in Taylor, South Carolina, is not participating in the Payment Protection Program. Um, hey, that wasn't just my decision. That's a group decision. But everybody has to decide. But I would, I'm praying that people will rise up and make sure that these local ministries are taken care of. And uh, those of you that aren't working and those of you that couldn't keep your employees uh, in a time like this and you choose to uh, take the uh, pay, this uh, uh, payment protection plan and utilize it in your local church, good for you. Hallelujah. That's your choice. Just be careful. I know some people tell me, and it's true, just because we have a tax exemption, we're in a situation that... Um, uh, they, they think they control us. We have to have eternal vigilance to be able to be protected from these uh, different situations that uh, come our way. Number two, should churches meet during this crisis? Should churches meet during this crisis? Do we not have a First Amendment right? Yes, we do have a First Amendment right. And we need to fight for that First Amendment right. But I also want you to know that we have a responsibility to be a good testimony. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And in this time of pandemic, we need to make sure that our good is not evil spoken of. We need to make sure that we're not in a situation where uh, we're saying, well, I have my rights and I'm going to go to church, and I don't care what's happening uh, with the health officials. And uh, I'm so thankful that the churches that, uh, that I'm aware of have said, no, I want to have a good testimony in this community. I want to be submissive to the authorities that God has placed over me. And as long as they're reasonable, then I'm not going to let my good be overspoken. What is the good? That I don't want to forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. But I want to be in a situation where I can have the opportunity to be able to let the community know that I care about them and I don't want to have the spread. I want to slow the spread, as our president and our vice president has said. We need to consider... Uh, what others might think of us and our ministries as we're trying to have an opportunity to minister in a local area. So I'm so thankful that uh, we have chosen here at Hazelwood not to have services at this time. Hey, we're hearing that maybe things in Indiana are opening up uh, great, and we'll have to make plans. How can we do uh, open back up safely? That's why I say pray for pastor and pray for wisdom. But for the time, we're trying to be a good testimony in the community. If, hey, if they said we had to be closed up for six months, it could be a point where we'd have to say, sorry. Or some countries, they say you got to be closed up all the time. You can't have it. And that's why you see people meeting in private places and all over 
having that assembly together. But I have to tell you, I'm thankful that we have this opportunity, even through social media, to be able to communicate one with another. And then there's the third situation, the third issue that's happening right now. We're having protests against the government. Now, can I just be very transparent with you and say, there have been some ridiculous uh, pro prohibitions put upon people around this country. I have had the privilege, by God's grace, to travel this country. And when you have some of these states that, okay, they have an urban center that is uh, really in, impacted, but then they have all these rural areas that aren't impacted at all, and they have one size fits all for the whole state, it, it drives me batty. I spent a good portion of my life in Missouri, and you had Kansas City on one side and uh, St. Louis on that. And by the way, I was in Kansas City, the right side. But they had those two sides, and in between you have all this country. That you, you're not going to have, should not have the same restrictions on the rural areas as you have on the cities, but they do. We're all hearing about New York City. And yeah, you got New York City, but have you ever been to upstate New York and seen all the country? And New Jersey has a lot of country areas. But then you get uh, a state like Wisconsin, where my son is at Maranatha Baptist University, and you have uh, Madison and Milwaukee, but then you have all those beautiful lakes and all that wonderful outside in Michigan. Oh, yeah, I've been to Detroit, but uh, I've been to the UP, too, Upper Peninsula, and can't plant seeds, can't go fishing. Can't, I, I can understand why people would be frustrated. And praise the Lord, we have the right in the United States of America to protest. But can I say this to the protesters? Um, when you do protest, remember again what I already shared in Romans 14 and verse 16, don't let your good be evil spoken of. And I know that some of those that organize the protest set it up so that it'll all be from the car. You'd just be circling around the Capitol. You would be keeping the social distancing and everything else. But to, as you have seen, not everybody stayed in the cars. And that's always going to happen. And I know the media blows it way out of proportion. But as we take that opportunity to express our concerns, I do that all the time in Washington, D.C., in the halls of, of Congress. I have the opportunity to do that in the White House, and I try to get other people to have that opportunity as well. But I think that uh, we need to make sure that our, our, our speech is always with grace, seasoned with salt. We need to make sure that we always have the right kind of testimony. We have the right kind of speech. We have the right kind of protest. And I've always told people, I'm not going to try to break the law by changing the law. Now, Protesting is not breaking the law, and of course, a lot of these things that states have put out are guidelines. But uh, let's make sure that as we exercise our right and our responsibility to be salt and light, that uh, we do it the right way. I've told uh, many people, if my message offends, so be it, because the word of God will offend. But if my manner offends, please forgive me because I don't want to uh, cause somebody not to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or not to listen to God's word because of my obnoxious spirit. Now, quickly, what's the exception to this Romans chapter 13 passage of having to, uh, being subject to those that have the authority over us, obeying those presidents and those governors? I want you to go back to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, and this is a, a statement that you've, I'm sure, heard before. Those of you that have heard me have probably heard it before. But as uh, Peter and other apostles were preaching the word of God, and as Peter was arrested for preaching the word of God and was told not to preach the word of God, and we'll look at verse 28 first. The authorities are saying, did not we straightly command you, these are the authorities, command you that you should not teach in his name. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Notice verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, look at it. Here's the statement. Here's the exception. 
we ought to obey God rather than men. I have a higher authority than government, and that's God. But be careful. Uh, I don't see any place in the Bible where God says that it would be wrong for us to social distance. If that's good for health, as a matter of fact, I don't want to bring evil upon my, my brother. And I, I want to do good to my brother. I want to love my brother. And so the social distance that we are being asked to practice and the hand washing that we're practicing, hey, should have been doing a long time ago. Uh, the, the different things that we're being asked to do uh, as reasonable uh, authorities, we should obey those. But if they ever said, you cannot proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I'm disobeying my authorities. If they ever said that we can't send missionaries all around the world, well, I'm disobeying our authorities. We're supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Any clear command of Scripture. And by the way, this is why the confusion about forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. But I, I, I challenge you to study that out. Who's, who's it telling that to? It's not telling the, the pastors that they have to have church. It's to telling the people when they have church, go! Be a part of it. And we all need to take the opportunity, yes, to watch these uh, different services on social media, but when the opportunity presents itself, be right back here in this auditorium, fellowshiping with other people and having the opportunity to hear the word of God proclaimed by Pastor Rich. So there is an exception but the exception is only on the clear teaching of God's word. Can I say that again? Not, not just your opinion, not just what you'd like to believe the Bible says, but the clear teaching of God's word. And can I say to you again, I'm so thrilled to be in the United States of America because here in this country, we have the freedom to be able to assemble. We have the freedom to be able to speak the truth of the word of God. And this is a wonderful opportunity for us to do it. Right now, when people are hurting, when people are wondering what's going to happen to them, and when people are dying, folks are open to what's going to happen after death. And we need to be ready to give an answer for the hope that's within us, the hope of Jesus Christ. Well, it's been wonderful to be able to be with you, even though I'd much rather be with you in person. And that's going to happen again, I'm sure, real soon. But until then, let's pray one for another. Let's pray for those that are without Jesus Christ. Let's pray for those, author those leaders that have authority of over us, both in our churches and in our country. And let's pray that this COVID virus will soon be behind us and we will be able to go forth serving the Lord Jesus Christ together until he comes. Father, I thank you for uh, this opportunity to be together and discuss some of these issues from a biblical perspective. I thank you for the, the joy there is in uh, being able to know Christ and serve Christ. And I pray that you'll give all of us the opportunity to be able to take advantage of this time where uh, we're being isolated some, but able to have extra fellowship with our spouses or with our family members. And I pray, Lord, that you would draw us closer to you and closer to each other during this time of need. Be, be close to our president, our vice president, uh, those in Congress, those that are in the governor's mansions, those that have to make decisions as health officials. Give wisdom, Lord, and keep uh, safe those uh, health workers and those first responders that are on the front lines. Thank you for them. And I pray, Father, that we will be continuing to be good testimony in this time of difficulty. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.